so now I've done all the work on the PC board that I need to do. Um, provided none of the transistor wires break off when I reassemble it. But um, the crowbar transistors are now in effect. I mean, they're connected. The circuitry's all been restored. And it still sounds okay. It still looks good in the scope. I don't have that asymmetrical clipping. I haven't resolved as to what was causing that. So that's kind of the mystery here is I didn't really fix anything. I'm pretty sure I didn't have any of these wires shorted that were going to the transistors. Um, I double checked that when I was looking at when I was getting that asymmetrical look. So it's kind of a mystery. But the next step is to go on and put the output transistors in. And see if it sets up bias and everything else. But it's looking good as far as that goes. Spotney Bay, by the way. So a crowbar circuit's fairly simple. This would be the bottom output transistor on a Tiger. Um, on a lot of amps it would be the top side, the positive side transistor, if the amp took its output off the emitter. Um, this amp takes its output off the collector. So there's also a 3 amp fuse in line with the power on both the negative and positive rails on a Tiger. And if I look at this circuit, I got a 0.1 ohm resistor here. And I've got a transistor here. If I drive enough current through this resistor, I'll drop enough voltage across it to turn this transistor on. If I turn this transistor on, it basically shuts the drive away from this other transistor. The base emitter of this other transistor is shut off by this transistor, this crowbar. Throwing a crowbar in the circuit. So at normal usage, this transistor does nothing. It's like it's not even there. But only when you have enough voltage developing across this resistor does this turn on. Now if it takes 6.5 volts for a transistor to turn fully on, I'll need 6.5 volts across this 0.1 ohm resistor. That means it'll take 6.5 amps to turn that transistor on fully. Um, and I've got a 3 amp fuse here, so what good is that? Wouldn't the fuse always blow first? Well, the thing is, a transistor is a lot faster than a fuse. Even a fast blow fuse has to go through a few cycles to get hot enough before it blows. So, whereas the crowbar is pretty much instantaneous, you know, it doesn't have to wait a cycle, it clamps down right away when it needs to clamp down. Also, you know, it's just going to start clamping down even at 0.5 volts. The reason they put such an overshoot there in terms of voltage is if they had it turning right on at 3 amps, then it would start interfering with the fidelity of the amplifier. Um, and this is a very low distortion amplifier, so they wanted to keep this crowbar way away from the circuit. They didn't want it interacting at all um, at full output of the amplifier, because they want clean output at the full output. So they had to pull the circuit back a little bit, and that's why it's really geared for more, you know, about a 6 amp current flow to really latch on instead of a 3 amp current flow. And this is a bit of a simplification. In the case of the .01 Tiger, there's actually two more resistors involved. One in series with the base, and one going off towards uh, more positive for bias. So it's got a little bit of a pre-bias. And a little bit of a limit to how much current it can pull. So these are going to affect the overall trigger point. You'd have to consider all the math with and look at these values. So it's a good thing I used the dim bulb tester. Because when I first fired this amp up I had a result like this. Uh, the bulb was bright. It should brighten and then dim right down. I started looking at the idle current, it was way up in the 20s and 30s. I should be getting 5 millivolts here, like I explained earlier. And to get it to um, have any effect at all on this control, I had to jumper the diode. But that's not the whole problem. The diode actually has a, uh, another diode in parallel with it to, on the PC board, just in case this does ever break. 
this isn't, I doubt this is broken, it's just the voltage difference is making it give me more uh, cut in the bias. So I've got a problem somewhere. And then I turn the bias low, try to get to that 5, and you see it does this flashing thing. A real instability in there somewhere. So I still have a problem somewhere, or I made a problem. Um, it's going to be real tough to try to see if there's any solder bridges. I don't see any burnt resistors. I've been tweaking around. I do get a slight effect if I wiggle. That might just be noise on the pot though, or me touching the pot. But it's sucking the voltage way down, even with this 40 volt, uh, 40 watt rather bulb, which is a little bit low, but um, it's sucking the voltage way down. So there's some kind of draw that's not natural in here. Well, it's this bias, which isn't working correctly. And it's not just because I use different output transistors, because I've used these same outputs in several Tigers now. I know they do work the same way. Um, and it's, I'm just too far off. It was just a little bit off and bias. I might say, well, I'll trim some of these resistors a little bit, but nah, there's something else going on here. I'm going to have to find out what's really wrong, or a sample just blow up on me later. <laughs>